This is the last day of the stream this week. We're doing D&Me. This is the show where I play D&D by myself because everyone else is busy. No one's ever free. So, we're going to do some D&D. &D we're going to have some fun. And we might actually finish Murder House today. We'll see. Let's meet everybody. Everybody introduce yourselves. All of the me's that are here. Hello. I'm here. Good morning. How you doing? It's me, Kane. Favorite werebear. Monster hunter. Pretty fun guy. I'm just happy to be here. I'm very excited for what we're going to end up doing. I'm Ophelia. I'm here. I'm also really happy to be here. It's going to be fun. Well, everyone's favorite is here. That's what's important. I'm ready to kick some ass and take some names. Hopefully I can steal something this time. I stole a little bit last time, but it wasn't really all that worth it. I'm here, and I'm ready to go. Your favorite robot. Here we go. Have some fun. And I'm always here. This, that, you know, this is my thing. And Charlie's here, which I don't know if I have a chat window set up for D&D yet because nobody ever shows up, at least not on this screen. But yeah, this is uh, d and It's the show where we play D&D, or I guess technically where I play D&D because everyone here is me. It's the only show on the internet like it. We're playing Curse of Strahd. Gregor, tell everybody, tell Charlie and anyone else who shows up what's going on. We're playing Curse of Strahd and we became a crew all hanging out and working together. When we got here to this creepy murder house, kids found us and asked us for their help. Their parents were kidnapped. So we went into their house looking for their parents, and it was very spooky and scary. We ended up exploring a lot of it, and we found out the horrible news. Apparently, their parents, the kids that we met, were dead the whole time. So they were ghosts, and their parents starved them. So. I'm on a quest of never-ending vengeance to kill their parents. I went and found their parents' graves, and they're not in there. So, they got alive. There seems to be some kind of culty stuff going down underground. So, I'm gonna take them out because I am both a cleric and a paladin, and important to kill these evil sons of bitches. And I helped. I've been here also, not like it's important, but... I've also been helping him. I'm a monster hunter, and I know this area very well. I'm kind of the muscle, and, you know, kind of the most important person. No, that's not true, because I am the most important person. My name is Flem. I'm a goblin wizard, the best wizard who's ever lived. Don't ask anyone else. I'm the best, okay? I'm the favorite. I try to steal stuff. That's why I kind of stick around with this crew. They're always kind of getting in my way. But well, I'm Ophelia. I'm just here to uh, make some friends and kick some ass. I wanted to go on an adventure, and then all of us got sucked into this horrible dark world of magic and evil. So I'm just happy to be here. I think that's everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much everything that's been going on. You're in Barovia. It's an undead land. This should be the end of this story, too, for this part, before we go into the big stuff. Yeah. So we are underground. So let me pull up the map. We're in this house spooky creepy house and you guys returned back upstairs to the first floor when you found this secret trap door that led upstairs so for the last eight hours everybody's been resting and doing their stuff what has everybody been doing i've been doing some squats some burpees lifting some weights working out and now i'm feeling the, the strength inside my inner beast is happy and it's been kind of Working out, flexing, looking all cool, you know, just chilling, getting getting nice and swole. I've been uh, looking up how to uh, shoot my magic arrows. I've got my arcane archer notes, and I've just been uh, arcane arching, you know, shooting my arrows, and then magic comes out. And I'm like, ooh, that's cool. I wonder how that's going on. You know, just trying to stay away from Vincent because he's working out, and he's got a weird relationship with me. I don't know what his deal is. I'm not flexing for any of you, okay? I'm not flirting right now. I'm just working out, okay? I'm a single man. I need to maintain my physique. And Ophelia, I've told you a hundred times. I think of you like you're my daughter, okay? I'm not into you. Hey, what about me, big boy? Are you into me? Because I'm over here and I'm hanging out. I'm reading, but I'm taking a peek every once in a while. I see you peeking, but I'm not going to get interested and do anything with anyone in the group, okay? I... I'm not in the place right now where I can just get the relationship with any of you. I wasn't saying anything about a relationship, bud. You know, I just wanted to have some fun. 
Yeah, well, not, not maybe one day, but no. No. No, thank you. Where am I? I just woke up. I've been bleeding to death. Ah, my oil is everywhere. Am I dead? Is that happening? Ah, ah, where am I? Um, calm down, man. You're fine. Okay? We were having a very important discussion here. A negotiation of sorts. Do none of you care that I almost just died? I care, man. You're my bro. We hang out. We do cool stuff. I don't want you to die. We saved your life. You're fine. You're a robot. Can you even die? I don't know. I was born like, I only remember like a week ago. I'm sure I can die. I'm fine. I, whatever. I don't want to deal with this. What's going on? Oh yeah, I wanted to kill those kids' parents because they're evil as shit. Let's, can we get back on topic? I mean, I'm ready to go steal stuff again. I'm excited. I got my new spells. I'm ready to shoot some grease on some people. It'll be fun. You know? Oil slick. It'll be cool. Alright, well. Are we, are we going then? Is everybody ready? Everybody all strong, excited, ready to go? You know, it's very important that we're all ready. You know, we don't fuck up. Cause it's gonna get dangerous soon. Yeah, well, I'm always ready, man. We just get one more pump in. Oh, yeah. There we go. Nice. Flex. Okay, good. Just gonna point over there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm good. All right, let's go. I'm gonna cock my gun. So yeah, we're gonna come back down through the stairwell. Man, everybody thinks that I'm into Ophelia. I feel like it's never clear. I don't, I don't want to be with her. I want to protect her, you know? I want her to be okay. Yeah, this is getting all over the place, man. Are you into me or do you want to be my dad? You know? I'm not, I'm not understanding this. Well, I don't, no. Just, just, just no. I got mixed feelings. It's, I got, it's complicated. It's, I got, it's, I, I don't want to talk about it, okay? This is, this, yeah. Vincent and Ophelia sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Can you please, can you not, okay? I'm, this is, whatever, okay. It's, whatever gets you off, man. Okay. Hey, I'm just saying. I, I calls him like I sees him. So, Greg, uh, I think we should go ahead. And I'm just gonna, just gonna push on and ignore this conversation. I feel like we should get back to business, so I'm just gonna keep moving, you know? Alright, as you guys are walking, Vincent, you walk out. Last week, when you were in this room, filled with skeletons and dead bodies that the cult was experimenting on, there were two statues. A statue of a man named Strahd and an orb he was holding. And last week, Flem, you heard a voice come out of the statue, and you ignored it. You hear that voice again, your own voice, speak into your mind. Hey, Flem. You doing? Looking good. You want to maybe take this orb? Huh? You want to take the orb from my statue here? You want it? It'd give you untold power. You really think I'm going to fall for that? Like, come on. I know you sound just like me, and I know you're very attractive, but, you know, I, I can handle, I don't need your stupid orb, okay? I know this is a trap. Obviously a trap. Well, you should make an insight check and see if you really think it's a trap. Because, uh, you know, that's the D&D way. And that's a 12. So you're pretty iffy about the whole thing. But surprisingly, the voice isn't all that convincing. Come on, just grab the orb. Grab the orb. Uh, no thanks. All right. You walk out of the room, not falling for my super scary orb trick. It obviously would have done something cool, but whatever. Just ignore it. You guys are walking through and you make it into room 33. As you walk into room 33, you remember the mimic that pretended to be that door. Still dead, still destroyed, just annihilated to the point where it's not even on the map anymore. And there's a chandelier in the center of this large room, table and chair in the center. Empty jug, two glasses in there, some candlesticks. Seems like this is where the cult leader meets with their cult and hangs out. Is there anything in those glasses? Can I take a sip? Uh, let me see. Yeah, there's some there's some liquid in the flasks. I'm going for it, man. I'm fucking thirsty. I haven't gotten drunk in, like, two episodes. So let's go. Uh, I'm gonna walk up to it. Stop. Just stop. No, no. Just don't drink random glasses in the middle of creepy dungeons. I'm gonna do it. Life's too short to, you know, not drink booze in the middle of a dungeon that may or may not kill me. 
This is a really bad idea. I mean, they could have just been here if there's booze in the glasses still. Uh, I'm gonna walk up and drink the other bottle of booze. Is there booze in that one? Yeah, there's a little bit more in that one. Damn it, stealing my booze. Whatever. Cheers, man. You want a drink? Let's drink. Woo! Hell yeah. That's why you're my favorite. Well, now I feel hurt and annoyed. It's probably fine. I mean, why would they have poison glasses on their table? I'm just saying, you, you probably shouldn't make it a rule to just drink random shit from a dungeon. Well, I don't tell you how to live your life, okay? I don't tell you how to, you know, have a will they, won't they with uh, Kane. Hey, you know, you can call me Vincent. You don't have to call me Kane. And also, we're not together, okay? I'm just gonna stretch that. Not together. I'm gonna just ignore this conversation. I keep moving into the next room on my own while you two are drinking. Oh, man. Okay. Okay. Uh, what's in room 34? As you walk in, it seems like a bedroom of some kind. There's a large wooden frame with feathered mattress, very fancy mattress. It's a wardrobe with a bunch of robes and candlesticks and a crate with some torches and some candles in it. it seems pretty basic. Not a lot going on. There is a footlocker that's sitting in there. What do you do? I'm gonna walk in and uh, rip open these cabinets and I'm gonna sort of scream, where are you? Where are you? Gustav, Elizabeth, this is your house. This has gotta be your bed. Where the hell are you? Because I can take you down, the things you did to your kids upstairs. Where the hell are you? Where are you? Hey, uh, he's screaming in there. We should probably check it out. Okay, fine. Let me finish drinking. Nice. Okay. Yeah, let's go. Okay, uh, I'm running in here. I see a footlocker. I want it. I'm going to, uh, check the corners, because last week we were up there and there were some enemies, so I'm gonna look around. Flem, as you're looking in the chest, there's a bunch of shit in there. There's a cloak of protection, uh... Four potions of healing, a chain shirt, a mess kit, a flask of alchemist fire, bullseye lantern, thieves tools, another spell book with a bunch of spells in it. A bunch of shit. It seems like it was stuff the cult took from other adventurers. That would be your third spell book once you pick that up. Fuck yeah, jackpot. Guys, there's nothing in this footlocker. I'm gonna proceed to uh, take everything. While you are stealing from your friends, everybody seems chill. Everything seems okay. Everybody's walking along. You're searching through some stuff. Something seems off. Everybody seems a little on edge. And suddenly, from behind the wall, you hear cracks. You hear screaming. You hear <laughs> from one wall right behind our pal Flem. And you hear <laughs> from the other wall behind Greg. And just as this is happening, as you guys are all together in this room, ready for battle, Ophelia, off on your own, you see a surviving ghoul from last week in the other corner, running towards you, shambling, angry. The undead corpses of three of the members of the cult. The two coming in, the stronger looking ones, the ones right behind you, look just like Elizabeth and Gustav Durst, the people you're here to kill. All right, I'm gonna check. I'm gonna do a perception check, see if I can find them before they kill me. 17, I fucking see them. There's no way they can hide from me. Nope, they rolled a 19 on their stealth, so you didn't see shit. As you look at Gustav walking out behind Flem, you get grabbed from behind by his wife, Elizabeth, who seems tortured and injured. She strikes at your back, right behind you and Flem, are these undead creatures. These ghasts, even worse than a ghoul, slightly stronger. They smell horrible. You seem unaffected, but Flem, you smell the stench of a dead body that's been rotting for a long time. Ooh, they got an at 20. They're first. Okay, so this one licks up on your back and tries to put this deep, poisonous breath into your mouth. But because you are a golem, a robot, it doesn't seem to affect you. It tries to bite onto your back soon after and misses based on your armor you feel like if this was someone else you would have been poisoned yeah it tried to slap you with its tongue like a liquor from resident evil slice into you phlegm you're also pretty fucked let's see what happens i need you to make a con save because it breathes and it slaps and you smell this horrible smell 
as its tongue slaps against your back. Okay, um, I'll be fine. I'm totally fine. I got zero constitution, but whatever. That's not good. That's a bad number. You are now poisoned as the man, the very angry undead man, slaps his tongue against your back. You have disadvantage on every check you make until you are healed from this. Slaps into your back, basically pierces your back with his tongue, deals nine damage to you. So you're not doing so hot from all that. All right, yeah, nine. Wow, that's a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We'll see if they can heal or if they're gonna get their asses kicked. So the two of them attacked you guys. Meanwhile, 40 feet over here, a ghoul is running straight at Ophelia because she decided to look around the corner and it swings at you and it hits you with its claws. I need you to also do a con save. You take six damage and then you have to do a save and we'll see if you survive the horrible poison that's about to flow through your veins. Ooh, okay, oh man, yeah. Oh fuck, okay, I'm paralyzed guys. As the ghoul, nibbles on your leg poisoning your flesh you are paralyzed you fall to the ground alone and no one knows you're there i'll let you do a dexterity save to see if you can let out a scream before you're fully paralyzed fuck man ghouls be poisonous oh my god 23 suck my lady dick okay yeah you manage to scream as loud as you can the others in the room here what do you say Guys, I'm fucked. They just put I'm paralyzed. Help me. Help me now. You fall to the ground paralyzed. Everybody is confused. There's a lot of shit going on. And that's where we'll start initiative. Everyone roll initiative. See what your turns are in this insane poisonous combat. I'm going to roll because I need to save everyone. But I, I do want to save her. Not because I'm into her. So, Ophelia, you are currently on the ground paralyzed what do you do uh cry i don't know what scream i can't move let's see what does paralyzed do uh i can't move or speak i can't uh i fail all saves enemies have advantage on attacks against me and if they hit me they get a crit immediately um i can't move i can't do anything you're not doing the greatest we'll just say that one two three four five six okay that is your turn you can't do anything you're just frozen phlegm what do you do there's a guy he just poisoned you from behind you're not paralyzed you're just poisoned i think it's kind of fucked up that both the women just got poisoned but whatever all right i'm gonna use my amazing powers i can't get away from him i gotta save myself first before i can save others i'm gonna try to roll around him I'm going to scream, Greg, get out of the way, and then I'm going to shoot a flamethrower with my bare hands. Greg, get out of the way. First, let's see if you can warn Greg. So make an intimidation check. All right, let's do it. Greg, Greg, get out of the way. Greg, uh, I'll have you do a perception check, see if you can hear that. I don't hear it. I don't hear it at all. Well, I'm still flamethrowing because I want to live. He's a robot. He'll be fine. So I'm going to roll like this, and then I'm going to flamethrower straight through, just burning everyone in my path. Boom, fire everywhere, burning everything. Boom, Kamehameha. Okay, you shoot fire. Uh, everybody, dodge out the fucking way. You'll be fine. We'll see. You need to be in a dex of 12. Let's see what happens to them. Miss, miss. They both get burned, so that's good. That's 10 damage. Uh, ooh, okay. All right, Greg. Make a dex save with your minus one dex. Flam. Why? No. no. Fuck. The fire burns the surface of you. You are made of stone and metal, but there might be something inside. You never knew. Nobody's ever cut through your armor. You don't know what's going on with you. You're not a normal golem. You were poisoned before, so there's something more going on with you. But you feel the heat of 10 fire damage go into your flesh. You're still very much alive, but that weakened you significantly. Your armor isn't melted or anything, but something inside feels wrong. You're not sure why. But the enemies took 10 each, so that's good. Maybe you took out probably around third, maybe less. But you did burn them, and that is your turn. 
Next up is Vincent. Okay, looking around the room, Flem just got poisoned and then set on a flamethrower. Greg just got set on fire, but he's fine. He's a robot. It's whatever. I turn and I hear someone I care about, like a daughter, not like a girlfriend. I feel rage in my heart. Someone I care about is in danger. I feel the anger of a thousand suns. I start running and I scream as the werebear inside of me grows stronger and stronger. And I go, get away from me, you son of a bitch. And I run up using all of my movement and I get between her and him. And I think I had to use everything to get over there. I just step in front of him and I'm like, get away from her. Take on somebody your own size. Okay, big, big man over here. Yeah, I guess you were just so angry you didn't think about it. We'll start with the ghoul and see what he ghouls up on you. He swings his claws, misses you, just strikes through, but just cutting hair. Across the map, over here, she tries to shove her tongue through the metal, but it doesn't work. He turns around angry, and he looks right at you, Flem, and he shoots his tongue directly at you. He deals five damage directly to you. You're pretty beat up, and you're almost dead. Seeing as you're a wizard and you're in a hand-in-hand -hand fight, I think we know who's gonna die this week. Get the fuck off me, you son of a bitch. I'm a goddamn wizard. As you scream, I'm a goddamn wizard, his tongue shoots into your arm, piercing through it into your chest. You're very hurt. Okay, on one hand, you just set me on fire. On the other hand, she is my friend. This thing isn't hurting me with me, it's licking my back. So I'm gonna use my new ability that I just got, Balm of Peace. I can move all the way up to somebody, Nobody will hit me while I'm doing it, and I can heal 2d6 plus 2. Hold my hand on the wound, holding the guy's tongue out of her chest, and I say, By the power of Paylor, the god of light, who I learned from a pamphlet I found last week, I heal you. I look over at Ophelia, who's slightly hurt, but about to get a lot more hurt. So I look at her and I say, Don't die. Don't die. And I use healing word and I heal her for 4. Saving everybody with my awesome heels. Also, I'm going to stand in front of her, between her and the, and the ghoul, because I'm a tanky man. Flem, it's your turn. Thank you for saving me, even though I just set you on fire. I could probably shoot something to help her over there, but it's pretty far. So, I'm going to deal with a problem we have. You're still in my goddamn way, so I can't use my flamethrower again. I'm going to take a dagger out of my pocket. I'm going to float it in the air with my force powers gonna float telekinesis style and i'm going to catapult it right into his face hell yeah 16 damage he's got to save gustav the man who killed his children stands up tongue sticking out he looks at you and suddenly an, a dagger shoots directly into his head and it deals 16 damage to him he's not dead but he's almost dead he has a dagger stuck in his face and he's covered in burns. He looks at you, and he speaks. You're gonna die, he says. I'm never gonna die. Fuck you. I take out my dagger, and I coat it in poison. I know they're poisonous, but that doesn't mean they're immune. Okay, that is the end of your turn. Back to the couple over here. We're not a couple of whatever. I I'm not even gonna argue. Anyway, <laughs> okay. I'm gonna save her. I'm gonna protect her. It's gonna be fine. Totally fine. I'm going to pull out my great axe with my bare arms. I'm going to swing at him. 22. That hits. That's 8 damage. Then, when I'm done with that, I'm going to roar. And I'm going to claw him. Hell yeah, fuck you. You're dead, dude. That's 14 damage total. Is it dead? Did I successfully protect her and kill the shit out of it? No. No, you did not. You walk in between her and the ghoul. You say that, you know, if you're going to pick a fight with someone, pick it with me. You strike into it, dealing a bunch of damage. You claw into it, right into its arm, cutting the side of its arm. Your axe is in its chest, your claw is in its arm, and it just looks at you with its mouth covered in blood, and it just screams. Uh, that is your turn, and it is then their turn. So it's going to attack you. It deals nine damage to you. It claws into your face, basically. It tries to strike through you. But the claw, as you back up, moves right past your cheek and into your chest. There's a massive scar that will always be there. 
And as he claws into you, make a con save. Fuck. God damn it. Well, you know what? I'm a barbarian. Con saves are my middle name. So fuck you. I ain't going to sleep. I feel fine. Is that all you got? That is all it's got. But across the room, we got the other two. Oh my God. How? I rolled two nat ones in a row. Okay. Gustav stands up. He looks at Flem, shoots his tongue out. But as he's shooting it out, his wife, Elizabeth, tortured and hurt from the years of everything he's done, hurt that he killed their kid, shoots him in the back with her tongue. Shoots him right in the back. He takes seven damage. He's still alive, but he's almost dead. He's right on the edge. And he's now fighting his own wife and you. Greg, what do you do? I saw what you did upstairs. I know what you did. And now... I'm gonna kill you, send you back to the hell you belong in. 11 damage, does he die? As you look at this man, what's left of a man, Gustav, who did some culty shit, locked his own kids in a room, starved them to death, his daughter and his son, you feel rage in your heart, righteous rage, swing your greatsword right into him, and you chop his head clean off severing it from his body swings through the air hits up against the wall and his body falls to the ground dead what do you say after you finish him i look at elizabeth holding the sword and i say go to your grave now and i point down the hall whatever you've done with him i spare you and i walk up to her i touch her chest i cast spare the dying so that she will never be brought back again and I tell her to go back to her grave. Your kids are asleep now. Your husband is gone. You can't hurt them anymore. Go to sleep. Rest. As you say this, she walks away. She leaves. Shambles away back to her grave where she'll fall unconscious and never wake up again. Totally rested. That is the end of your turn. But, meanwhile, across the battlefield, as she's kind of walking through the background, just like, hum da dum da dum in the foreground, we see... Vincent standing over the ghoul. Ophelia, you've been healed by the healing word, which means you are no longer paralyzed. What do you do? Well, seeing as I've barely done anything in this game, I stand up and I shoot my bow. Nat 20. Holy fuck. That couldn't have been more perfect. 15 damage. I walk up behind Cain, Vincent. I look at him and I say, I've told you this a hundred times, but I don't need you to protect me. I can handle myself. And I shoot an arrow in the ghoul's head. Your arrow strikes through the ghoul's skull, glowing with energy, and it dies. It falls to the ground, gone forever. You are no longer paralyzed. Kane is standing there, giant burly man, beastly form, standing there. Fueled with rage. How do you react, Kane? I know. I know you can handle yourself. And I back away. I turn back into a human. Clothes ripped, muscles blaring. I try my best not to flex, not to flirt, even though every corner of my being makes me want to flirt at all times. And I look at her and I say, good job, good job. Not into you. Nope. Not, no, nope, nope, uh, nope. Goodbye. All right. All right. Goodbye. I walk away. <laughs> It would have been the perfect opportunity for him to kiss me. I stand there, just, like, blue-balled, because I am kind of into Kane, but also I'm not going to admit that to him. No way. No. As he walks away, I pull my arrow out of his ghoul's head, and I walk up, and I think, I say it out loud, is he into me, or does he think he's my dad? I'm very confused. Mixed signals. I know he had like a kid before and he's got all this backstory drama from the previous episode, but like, I don't know, man, he's got issues. I got issues. What issues do I have? If I'm into a guy who acts like he's my dad, God, this is a lot to process. Yeah. So meanwhile, as Vincent sort of walks in confused and not sure how he feels about it. Flem, what do you do? I stand up, brush myself off a little bit. I walk up to Gustav's severed head. I kick him in the face, yeah. and then uh, I put his head in a bag, because I already had the severed head from before, 
And I add it to my collection of severed heads because you, we just keep severing, severing heads. Here's the other head. Here it is. Back in my bag with the bugbear. Everything's good. Put it in my bag. Go. We got him. Put a thumbs up. And then uh, I walk over and I start just looting the chest like I was doing before. Cool, guys. Keep up the good work. I'm gonna just look through here, you know. You guys talk amongst yourselves, you know, whatever. Nothing here to worry about. Nothing valuable. I walk into the room and I say to Greg, Damn, dude, you just chopped that guy's head off? Crazy. Wow, that was a lot. Uh, I'm a little in shock about all of that. Uh, what are you talking about? We kill people all the time. Like, we just killed some zombies. We did that like an hour ago. Oh yeah, yeah, the zombies. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. That was the intense moment that I can't deal with. Yes. Yes, that was it. Yeah. Nothing else is going on. Nope. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we killed them. We've cleared this place. I don't think there's anything. I mean, there... There were more. We didn't go everywhere. There was another pathway. You could probably check that out before we leave. Yeah. So, I feel like this is a perfect place to stop. Usually the show only goes for about an hour and a half. And I feel like if we started now, we'd be going for another, you know, two hours. And I got another game I want to play. So, I think this is the perfect place to end it for this week. Nice, solid cliffhanger. You know? There's more to go, but we just finished killing the big bad. There's a bigger bad somewhere. But yeah, this has been fun. Uh, let me go full screen. So this has been D and me. This will eventually be on a podcast channel, like fully edited along with all the other episodes. I think this is episode eight. It's been good. This was a good one. We always get somehow emotional and someone almost always dies. But you know what? This time, one of you was paralyzed. Didn't actually die. Yeah, uh, being paralyzed is terrifying. Like incredibly terrifying. They didn't paralyze us before. What would have happened when the three ghouls attacked us last week? Like you, you all passed your con saves. So you were fine. But yeah, you guys all could have been paralyzed last week. It's crazy. Ghouls are fucking crazy powerful. Don't know how I feel about this whole uh, Ophelia Kane thing. A couple of days ago, last time, we had a, a sort of moment where I talked about my kid being gone and she reminds me. But also, she kind of reminds me of my wife. So I got, I, got some, uh, I, I got some issues, you know. We'll see where this all goes. I'm just glad I could give vengeance for, you know, Rose and Thorn. They died. Their parents sucked. I guess their mom wasn't as bad. Oh, yeah. Uh, I should probably state, just to be obvious, my wife's dead. I'm not married. Flirting with everyone. Uh, yeah. If you're just joining now, you know, she's gone. But, uh, I don't know. This is weird. This is weird, but I'm not ready for, for a relationship, you know? I'm just not ready. Uh, you know, we'll see where this goes. You could have kissed me there. It could have been an epic moment. It's not time, okay? It's not time. Not time at all. Remember when the show was about, like, fighting as a vampire or something? Was it about fighting a vampire? I thought we were looking for a dwarf or some shit. Didn't didn't Santa Claus show up at one point? Yeah, he did. He did came the shotgun. Very weird. Anyway, this has been fun. I'm excited for next week. Will we figure out how all this happened? Will Kane and Ophelia, like, get busy? Or will they create boundaries? Who knows? Will I ever get a, you know, a centric part of an episode? Who knows? I'm getting a little damsel-y, gotta be honest. I feel like I need to start being a little bit more forward and kicking some ass. Well, I'm just glad I'm here, you know? I got another spellbook. I got three spellbooks now. I'm fucking awesome, okay? I'm the best one here, so just know that. Okay. Well, let's not waste any more time. I want to play some Hades. So, this has been fun. I had a good time. I'll see all you guys next week. Everybody say bye. 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 See you next week, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, bye. I didn't see what was going on with the two of them. I killed them, okay? Gregor, uh, Gustav is dead, so goodbye, Gustav. And good night, Elizabeth. All right, everybody. I'll see you guys next week. All of the me's, because you're all me. Thanks for watching. Bye.